And now for today's Bible question. Today we've been learning about a time of questioning. We saw how the religious leaders of Israel questioned Jesus to try and trap him in his words. Jesus answered all their questions wisely and then asked them a question about the Messiah being David's son and Lord, and none of them were able to answer him. Someone might ask the question, why do some people try to argue with the Bible or with Jesus? It seems rather amazing that Jesus was questioned by the religious leaders of his day with the intent to find fault with him. It is so characteristic of man's sinful condition that he will try to find fault with others so as to justify himself. A humble man will listen and learn and be corrected if need be. However, a proud man will not listen, learn, or be corrected. We will see this especially of those people who have attained some status for themselves. These religious scribes and priests were puffed up in pride and loved to be thought of as Israel's spiritual elite. They loved to go around in their long robes so men could think highly of them. They treated their religious position as an accomplishment that set them above all others. They saw themselves as carrying God's authority, and thus everyone had to pay them homage and respect, obeying all that they said. They were not accustomed to anyone challenging their authority. They were indignant with Jesus, the young Jewish teacher, who contradicted them, exposed their hypocrisy, and undermined their authority. To save their position and honor among the Jews, they felt they had to oppose Jesus. Even if in their deepest thoughts they knew they were wrong, and they knew they should listen to the godly words and correction of this wise younger man. But pride filled their hearts, and they could not admit to all the people that they were only religious hypocrites, and they were just sinners like anyone else. Their religious status was more important to them than the truth or God's salvation. Until a man is willing to humble himself before God and admit he is a sinner, he cannot be saved from God's judgment. How sad and evil is the curse of man's pride and stubborn rebellion. Among all the religious rulers, there were a few who were humble enough to listen and learn from Jesus. Nicodemus was a Pharisee and a teacher in Israel but was willing to come to Jesus one night to ask him about himself and his teachings. Jesus helped Nicodemus to learn that he needed to be born again through faith in the Son of God. It appears from other passages of Scripture that Nicodemus became a believer in the Lord Jesus and was saved. Sadly, most of the religious leaders of Jesus' day perished without God's salvation. Do you think that because a man is called a pastor or a priest that this assures him of being in heaven with Jesus? Today we can also see the same religious pride as was seen in those former religious leaders who were the enemies of God and the strongest opponents to Jesus. Why would anyone dare to argue against the Bible or quarrel with Jesus' words? This can only come because of pride in the heart and a life of sin. All men are sinners, but there are those who think they are more righteous and do not see themselves as sinners. This spiritual pride is a wicked thing in the sight of God, for it corrupts the heart and leads many into spiritual darkness. Men will fight to maintain their religious title, status, or false doctrine even when it clearly contradicts the teachings of Scripture. Many men who have been trained in Bible schools and seminary are compelled to accept the dogmas of the denomination that they belong to and would not contradict those dogmas even if their conscience knew that it was wrong because they want to hold on to their religious position before men. The pride of position and the fear of losing their status cause them to compromise God's truth. 
How refreshing to meet a man who does not care about popular opinion or the cultural and traditional influences as much as he cares about the word of the Lord and will stand on that even if it cost him his religious reputation, his financial support, or even his life. We have seen some men historically who stood against the false practices of the church and stood for the word. These men, like Jesus, were persecuted and some martyred, but they have helped to lead the church out of darkness into light. Standing for truth is a costly venture when most of us are willing to succumb to the pressures of popular opinion. May God give each of us a willing heart to defend truth and not compromise to accommodate our pride or position in the church. Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. Matthew chapter 18 verse 3